Welcome to the Arctic Crafts All About the Base bonus episode. Yes, I know the title of this uh, episode is rather childish and you're welcome for the ear. I'm going to... Um, I'm doing this episode because uh, several people have asked me about my bases and I've decided to make this episode so I can tell you what I know and what I have found out on the internet about the different bases and what my suppliers, where they source their fibers and that sort of stuff. Uh, if you're new to this channel and you haven't seen me before, uh, this is not a normal episode. Uh, I, have a, I have a standard knitting podcast with whips and FOs and uh, you can find that on this channel. Uh, but of course if you're here because you're interested in yarn bases you're welcome to stay and and um, I hope what I hope you can learn something from this I know I have learned quite a lot and I have to say something before I start talking about this I'm, what I'm going to say today is stuff I found online uh, things you can find out online if you do some research. I'm not an expert. Uh, hopefully I don't say anything that's basically wrong. But most of the information I've gone I've had from my suppliers. I thought that was the best way to do it because I had to check how they treat their fibers. With that out of the way, we'll start with uh, uh, some of the bases I'm showing you today uh, are going to be discontinued or they're already discontinued and I only have a few skeins left and I'm going to tell you as I go along whether the base uh, is a permanent fixture in my shop or it's on its way out and the first one I'm showing you is on its way out this is my 100% Peruvian alpaca And there you have a close-up. Uh, this is not Surrey alpaca. Surrey alpaca is really popular these days as a replacement for mohair. Uh, this is Huacaya alpaca. So it's uh, more like wool, but it's hypoallergenic and it's not prickly. And uh, I only had two skeins of undyed alpaca left. And uh, the reason why I'm not going to keep the alpaca in my shop is because it doesn't sell, to be honest with you. And it's got a limited use because uh, if you knit, for example, a sweater in 100% alpaca, you'll have a tunic in a short period of time because alpaca doesn't hold its shape. So it's perfect for shawls, but not hats because it's loose, it loses its shape and it's quite expensive so uh, that's why it's on its way out of the shop. I'm not sure what to do with the last two undyed skeins. I might actually sell them as undyed skeins or use them myself held together with something else to make up a DK weight because that's a fingering that's a fingering weight and uh, that's the alpaca. And uh, I also have this uh, uh, I'm going to show you some more fingering weight. Uh, this is a merino yarn. It's a fine merino and because and the difference between a fine and an extra fine merino is that the extra fine uh, the fibers are are um, the thinner if that's the way to to say it so that's this feels a bit more woolly i think i'm going to be rather cross with this camera before i'm ending this episode because i struggle with the focus this merino is from turkey this supplier gets all their merino from Turkey. I think the yarn is uh, is milled in Turkey as well. 
and this is a base that's on its way out. It's 100% merino, fingering weight. I also have uh, a different merino fingering weight from the same supplier. And this is the extra fine merino. So it's really, really soft. And um, this is the yarn. If you bought a sweater quantity fingering weight from me, this is the yarn you have been getting so far. I still have a couple of sweater quantities left in this space. So if you want 100% merino fingering weight, I still have some in stock, either for custom orders or I might just dye it up and put it in the shop because I'm not getting more of that, uh, that particular base. And that's also Merino from Turkey. Uh, here is an extra fine Merino worsted. Same supplier, same source Merino fibers from Turkey. And um, it's really soft. And this is a super wash. Uh, the yarns I've showed you until now, uh, this, the, the, the yarn I'm using for sweater quantities up to this point, the extra fine merino, is a superwash, and this is a superwash. But I'm just going to say it as it is, uh, even though these yarns are superwash, I don't recommend washing hand dyed yarn in the washing machine. It can dull down the colors. Just so you know. So even though a hand dyed uh, yarn is uh, labeled superwash, I recommend hand wash dry flat. It doesn't take that much longer. You can never put wool in the tumble dryer anyway, so uh, you might as well hand wash it. And a wool woolen sweater doesn't need to be washed unless you get a stain on it or something, because uh, it's kind of repellent, if you know what I mean. Uh, you can uh, hang it out and air it out, but you don't have to wash a wool sweater. Not a lot, anyway. And uh, that's the... Uh, that's a couple of... Uh, and I have another merino. And this is Falkland merino and it's a worsted weight and I'm not going to have worsted in my shop anymore. Um, it took some time for me to decide this but because worsted weight for one it's a slow seller and I have limited storage space so that's a limit to how many bases I can have in the shop. So if I get a new base in as I've done recently I'm going to talk about the base later so uh, worsted is on its way out, all my worsteds. I'm going to focus on fingering and DK from now on. So this is a really soft merino. It's also a superwash, extra fine merino, and it's crazy soft. I only have three skeins left undyed of that particular base. And I think I'm going to just dye it up in three different colors and put it in the shop because it's not enough for a garment. It's possibly enough for a shawl. Uh, I was thinking about showing you uh, dyed skeins so you can see what they look up, like dyed up. But then I decided this is going to be more of a, uh, not lecture really, but uh, I'm going to tell you about the different bases. And I wouldn't know what color to show you anyway. So if you want to see what these yarns look like dyed up, uh, there's a link to my shop under this video. So you can go in there and all the bases are labeled and in their different sections. So you can find them easily. And now we're over and uh, I'm going to talk a bit about a uh, different fiber. And this is uh, my Poldale. Uh, this is a uh, yarn I'm discontinuing. I'm still going to have Poldale, uh, Poldale sock. This is a 100% Poldale sport weight. 
and uh, I'm going to still have sport weight in the shop but I'm replacing this with a merino nylon sport weight because it's more versatile and again I have limited space so uh, if I'm going to have only one sport weight I need it to be something you can use for both socks and garments and this is a hundred percent pole dale and the pole dale is a mix between Corridale and Polworth. And uh, the difference between, um, I'm going to, I can show you the Corridale, Corridale sock as well, because, um, or I can just tell you, here is the Corridale sock yarn. And that's a non-superwash. Both of these are non-superwash. And this is my Corridale sock yarn. This is 80, percent Corridale, 20 percent nylon and the Corridale is as I said a mix between um, uh, sorry the pole Dale is a mix between um, Corridale Corridale and Polworth I don't have it I get I got distracted sorry <laughs> so the pole Dale is a mix between Corridale and Polworth and the Corridale uh, is uh, is a really um, strong strong fiber. Uh, it's uh, it's got uh, the, a good staple length, so it's really popular by, uh, uh, with spinners. And they blended that with uh, Polworth because the Polworth wool is known for its softness and it's kind of silky. It's also a strong wool, but if you mix Poldale, Polworth and Corridale, you get a wool that's strong and soft and kind of silky feeling. And uh, the Poldale sock is my most popular sock yarn. And that's this one. You can't tell the difference really on camera, but... Uh, you can feel it if you feel both the Poldale sock yarn and the Corridale sock yarn. The Poldale is a tiny bit softer. And the Poldale is superwash, the Corridale is non superwash. And I have another Corridale to show you, and this is a fun one. Uh, I only ordered 10 of these just for a trial. And um, it's a slub yarn. It's thick and thin, and it smells real sheepy. This is 200 meters for 200 grams. So it's, I think that's a bulky weight. Uh, I actually need a sweater in this. Uh, I can put up a picture of it. It's the Ursa by Jacqueline Seaslack, and I knit it with this, this yarn. It's a thick and thin, and it's really soft. And that sweater is something I'm never going to wear, probably because it's so thick and um, it's too warm for me. But it's uh, it makes uh, a real nice, um, make a real nice uh, exhibition piece when I go out selling yarn. So I have a few skeins left of this undyed. And now the season is starting for... Uh, stuff like that so uh, I might dye up the rest and put it in the shop I already have some dyed skeins and this is my uh, slub uh, thick and thin yarn and you can find that in the shop under in its own section and this is the DK that's on its way out of the shop it's a really nice kind of high twist DK, so the stitch definition is really good on this one. It's, uh, I think this is a non-superwash, I'm not sure. It, it behaves like a non-superwash when I dye it, at least. And uh, this is, uh, as I was saying, a DK. And this merino is, uh, is all the stuff I've been, both the Poldale and the Corridale and the this merino is from a different supplier that sourced most of the fibers from the Falkland Islands and the UK. 
And I have one more skein to show you a base from the same supplier and this is my new DK that is replacing the other one. This is a superwash DK and it's the thing about this DK is that it's 80% merino, 20% nylon. So it's again versatile. Limited storage space, I need a versatile DK. So you can knit socks with this as well as garments. And it's really soft. And this I sell this on 150 gram skeins. And the reason for that is uh, if you're going to knit a pair of men's socks in DK, you need more than 100 grams. There's a reason why commercial six ply sock yarn is often sold in, sold in 150 gram balls. You need 150 grams for a pair of men's socks. And another good thing about the, the 150 gram skeins is that four skeins is enough for a sweater. So it's easier to uh, both for me to dye up. I only have to dye up four skeins for a sweater quantity. It's easier to ship and it's easier to deal with for you as well because you have more yardage in each skein. So not as many ends to weave in. And now I'm going to a different supplier uh, that all the merino for them are uh, sourced from all over the world. And all the bases I'm showing you from now on are bases that are in my shop and will stay in my shop. And we'll start with my merino single ply. It's called HT singles, HT for high twist, because you can see for a single ply, this is, is a kind of high twist for a single ply. It makes it uh, more uh, sturdy. And uh, uh, I still wouldn't knit a sweater probably in single ply because it kind of pills easier than plied yarns. But if you're prepared to live with that, it would make a really soft sweater. But I would recommend using this for shawls and other accessories. And that's a merino as well. And, and we have um, a silver sparkle sock. This might, I might not keep this in the shop. Uh, both because it doesn't sell, at least my silver sparkle doesn't sell, and it's actually a pain to dye. Because you have to be really, really careful not to lose the sparkle. So I'm not friends, to put it like that, with the silver sparkle. So I might not keep that in the shop for long. And if you'll excuse me, I'm being uh, interrupted by a cat that wants to come in. So even if this is not a normal episode, the cats still interrupt me. Uh, I have um, I have some more merino. This is my merino sock yarn. And it's called platinum sock. It's 75% uh, merino, 25% uh, nylon. And this merino uh, is sourced from all over the world, mostly from the UK. And uh, I'm not sure if I told you a lot about the merino, but I think uh, I think you know. Merino is uh, one of the most popular fibers because it's so soft. And I also have a different sock yarn. It's called titanium sock and the only difference between titanium and platinum. I was thinking if you can focus on this, you'll see the difference with your own eyes. And the difference is, okay, there you got it. The difference is that the titanium sock is high twist. And the only reason why I have titanium sock in my shop is that because of the whole COVID-19 situation, uh, yarn suppliers 
have problems getting hold of specific bases. And Platinum Sock is one of them. Uh, they run out of 50 gram skeins. And because I'm lazy, I ordered Titanium Sock 50 gram skeins instead of splitting up my own 100 gram skeins into 50 gram skeins. So that's why I have Titanium Sock in the shop. When all this COVID business is uh, all over and done with, I might not keep titanium in the shop. I have to decide anyway between platinum and ti titanium because I don't think I can have two merino nylon uh, sock bases where the only difference is high twist and not high twist. So um, I of course also have the minis in titanium sock. So if you buy a uh, 50 plus 20 sock set from me, you get both the 50 gram skein and the mini in titanium sock. The other minis I sell mini sets are platinum sock. I wasn't going to talk a lot about the shop, but I ended up mentioning it anyway. Um, here's here's my uh, the sport weight I'm going to keep in the shop. I was telling you the other sport, the other sport weight, the Corridale sport is on its way out. Sorry, that was a Poldale sport. And this is Merino nylon, and that's why I'm keeping it in the shop because it's versatile. You can knit both socks and garments. And trust me, this is really soft and perfect for sweaters. And this Merino is also sourced from all over the world except from Australia, as I was saying about the Muley Singh. So that's, uh, and then I have one base left to show you that I'm going to talk a bit about because it's, it's uh, uh, my new sweater yarn. I think I'm going to just have this as a fingering weight without nylon in it. And it's, it's really, really soft and it's called natural boo. And the reason for that is this is a merino bamboo mix. It's 80% merino and 20% bamboo. And the reason why it's called natural boo is because this is natural bamboo. Uh, the difference is um, normally bamboo fibers in yarn are bamboo viscose and when you use uh, when you make viscose you have to use a lot of chemicals to uh, produce the fibers you then spin into yarn this bamboo is uh, is made or the fibers are made using much less chemicals that means the, the bamboo isn't quite as soft as the viscose but it's more than soft enough. I knit a sweater in this and it's the softest uh, hand knit sweater I have. So trust me, even though it's natural bamboo and it's not used and they don't use uh, as many chemicals when they produce it, it's still really, really soft. And the bamboo in this is grown in China. So that's, uh, I'm only going to talk about one more thing and that's superwash versus non superwash because uh, superwash has had a bad rap because of the process used uh, because they use chemicals to make the fiber superwash uh, the process basically means that you first treat the fibers with chlorine to uh, dull the fibers down you remove the in lack of a better term, spiky bits. Uh, English is my second language. Uh, and after that, you coat the fibers. Each individual fiber is coated with a really, really thin layer of resin. And that's what makes the yarn superwash. They still use the same process, but there are really strict restrictions in place for what you can um, let escape into nature when you're doing this. Uh, so you have to recycle 
the solutions and use them over and over again and what you uh, uh, what you what can I call it what escapes into uh, the surroundings have to be clean water and those restrictions are in place at least in all the EU countries and all my superwash yarn are made in countries that have those restrictions in place so I have I have really good conscience when this comes to all my yarns when it comes to superwash contra non superwash mulesing uh, the natural bamboo and when I dye the yarn I also only uh, when I empty my uh, my dye pans at the end of the day all the water is clear so um, that's what I I hope you learned something from this little talk I have uh, I'm not claiming to be an expert really not an expert I had to do the research online myself so if there's something you feel you have if you think there's something I haven't mentioned please uh, write the question in the comments below I can address it in a normal episode and uh, so hopefully you're satisfied with this little lecture and I'll see you again perhaps in a normal podcast episode thank you for listening and i'll see you later